wicked. So now they're a people to tempt. And so the devil begins to marshal them all together. And what does he do? Verse 8, he goes out to deceive. He's right back to his old games. He didn't repent. He had a thousand years to think about his foolish and unwise decisions. And the moment he's given another opportunity, he's right back to the same old, same old. Deceive, deceive, deception, deception. It says he goes out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to the battle whose number is as the sand of the sea. Think of it. Every single wicked person who has ever lived is alive at that moment. Every one of them is alive right then and there. Every person who hadn't put their faith in Jesus Christ. Verse 9, they went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints in the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and did what? Devoured them. They're going to try and take the city by force. Satan deceives them. He says, hey, we can take that city. That's my city. I mean, who knows what he says to try and persuade them in this ludicrous, ill-fated adventure. He says we can take the city. And when God looks down and sees that none of the wicked are repentant, none of them are what? Repentant. Never forget this, people. Never, 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 never forget this. If anyone in this room is lost, it will not be because God wouldn't accept you, but because you chose not to accept God. Someone say amen. There's not going to be anybody that God says, I didn't like him. I didn't want her up there. No, 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 no. If anyone is lost in this room or out of this room, it'll be because they said, I don't want to have anything to do with God. God is a gentleman. He will not ah, 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 twist your arm and make you do the right thing. Someone say amen. But like a rabid dog who knows he's going to die anyway, one last chance, one last fix, and they begin to surround the city to try and take by force what they wouldn't receive by grace. Mm. The Bible says that fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. What does it do? It devours them. So the wicked are destroyed. All the wicked who have ever lived try to take the city by force. Verse 9, they went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints in the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and what did it do, everyone? It devoured them. What does the word devour mean? It means destroyed. And then the earth is made, what? New, you're in Revelation chapter 20. Look with me at verse 14. Revelation chapter 20 and I'm reading in verse 14. It says, then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the what? Second death. So if you have a second death, what do you know you have? It's a, it's a mathematical, axiological truth that if you have a second death, you have a first death. And then notice verse 15. Anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the what? Lake of fire. What's the lake of fire? It's that fire that descends from God out of heaven and devours them. Then the very next thing that you see, Revelation chapter 20, verse 1, John sees that, new, that holy city, that wonderful city, the new Jerusalem, descending from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her uh, husband. Boom! Right down there on the planet Earth. And then God makes a new earth. Someone say amen. amen. He said, oh, wait, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. God makes a new earth? Absolutely. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Absolutely powerful. And I could give, oh, Lord have mercy. We could go on and on and on. The meek shall inherit the earth. There will be people who have put their trust in Jesus. There will be no pain, no death, no sorrow, no disease. The Bible says the former things have passed away. No war, no terrorism, no 9-11, no conspiracy theories, no garbage, no trash. Someone say amen. I'm tempted to say no Republicans and no Democrats either. Hallelujah. Only Christians. The meek shall inherit the earth. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Praise God in heaven. I'm tired of this old place. Everybody that's alive will be either inside of that city, that's the righteous, or outside of the city, that's the wicked. I'm looking at your study guide. Inside or outside? Inside or outside? At the close of the millennium, following the resurrection of the wicked, everyone who has ever lived will be alive all at the same what? Time. What a sight that will be. All of the righteous inside of the city, the New Jerusalem. All of the wicked will be outside of the city, the New Jerusalem. The Bible says that the walls of the New Jerusalem are what? Clear. Revelation 21, 18. Clear gold. The righteous and the wicked will be able to see one another. The wicked make an effort to overtake the city by force. It is at this time that the fires of the vengeance of the judgment of God descend upon them. And what was that word, everyone? Devour them. Now here, I'm going to tell you something that's absolutely amazing from a biblical perspective. That fire that devours them, that brings about the second death, that fire is hell. That's what did I say, everyone? That's hell. Let me just make this as plain as can be. Hell is not burning right now. 
I don't know what you've believed before, but I'm going to tell you biblically, hell is not burning right now. Purgatory is not burning right now. There's not one scintilla, one iota of Bible evidence that says anything about a purgatory. That's a tradition. That's a what? A tradition. Also, this idea that hell is right now and people are down in the hot place, you know, getting poked, poked, poked by the devil and he's turning them over in skewers and throughout the sea. I mean, give me a break. This is the most ridiculous thing. You won't find anything in the Bible about that. This fire that descends at the close of the millennium that devours the rebellious, this is hellfire. Now, let's move now to the next part of our study, this idea of hell. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do the things that I say? That's a good question. Can you say amen? If we're going to call ourselves Christians, then we should be obeying Jesus and not anyone else. Someone say amen. I love Jesus' question. He's able to cut right to the heart of the matter. He says, hey, why are you calling me Lord and don't do the things I say? It's easy to put a little sticker on the back of your Honda Accord. It's quite a different thing to obey the Lord of glory. Someone say amen. amen. He says, hey, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. You call yourself a Christian. Why do you call me Lord and don't do what I ask you? The Lord Jesus gives us His plain, explicit commands, the Ten Commandments. I and mean, we could talk about the simple things that God has made clear. And He says, hey, if you're going to call me Lord, why don't you do what I say or what I command? Very, very simple. So, the word hell occurs 54 times in the Bible. I'm going to see if you can keep up with me here. It's right there in your study guide. The word hell occurs how many times? 54 times in the King James Version of the Bible. In the Old Testament, hell is translated 31 times from the Hebrew word sheol. That's right in your study guide, which simply means grave or place of the departed. Now, the reason I'm bringing that out is this. If I say hell, and I say, what picture comes to your mind? I can almost guarantee flames come to your mind. Lava comes to your mind. Fire and brimstone comes to your mind. That is not what would have come to the mind to a Hebrew. The word hell is from the word sheol, which simply means grave. It had no connotation of burning whatsoever. No connotation of what? Burning whatsoever. And that's every use of hell in the Old Testament. Every use of hell in the Old Testament, 31 times, is the word sheol, which simply means grave. What does it mean, everyone? Grave. We come to the New Testament, there are two Greek words that are translated as hell, Hades and Gehenna. Hades and Gehenna, you want to write those down. And only one of those words has anything to do with burning, and that's that word right there, Gehenna. Hades is just exactly like the Old Testament word sheol, it means grave or place of the departed. Okay? So, we're going to ask several questions here about hell. We're going to ask, when does hell take place? Where does hell take place? Which we've actually already answered. And how long? How what, everyone? How long? So we're right there at the top of your study guide, page 3. Praise the Lord Jesus. We're making good time. Okay, here we go. When is hell? Well, first of all, hell is not right now. Someone say amen. amen. Hell takes place at the end of the millennium. When is hell? Hell takes place after the thousand years. Question number two, where is hell? Hell takes place right here on planet Earth. Hell is not some place underneath the ground. If you dig down far enough through the various layers of, you know, sediment, you're going to find a hot place down there with several barbecue pits. No, 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 no. Hell takes place right here on planet Earth. When the fires that descend from God devour the wicked and actually is recreated anew, the Earth made new. Can you say amen? So, that answers the question of when, that answers the question of where. Now look at this one. What about the question of how long? The question how long is an easily answered question. It's a what, everyone? It's an, how, how, what is it answered? Easily answered. Okay, hang on. Buckle your safety belts, by the way. Do you have safety belts there on your seats? You might want to buckle them. As we have already learned, human beings are not naturally immortal. Can you say amen if that's true? Human beings are not naturally immortal. Immortality is a... Gift, hallelujah, you're already getting it, is a gift from God that comes as a result of accepting Jesus Christ as your personal what? Savior. Let's all say it together. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. So if you believe, what do you get? Everlasting life. But if you don't believe, what do you get? Perishing. Notice it doesn't say, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not have everlasting life in the eternal fires of hell, but have everlasting life in heaven. Is that what the verse says? Well, the verse says that whoever believes in him won't perish. Won't what? Perish. But have the opposite of perishing, which is everlasting life. Now this gets absolutely incredible. You need to hone in here on these underlined sections. It is absolutely critical to understand this simple point. If man is not, what's the next word? Immortal, then there is no need for hell to burn throughout the ceaseless eternal ages.